What will make success in pastoral ministry? Think about that for a second. What makes pastoral ministry a success? Ministers of the gospel know they will be successful if they follow God's prescription for the office they hold. They know that they're going to be successful. You say, well, no, that's not necessarily true. Churches close all the time. I, well, I don't, didn't ask whether or not churches close all the time. I asked what success in ministry is. Listen to what God says in Isaiah 46, 10 and 11. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. The man who executes my counsel from a far country, indeed I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass, I have purposed it, I will also do it. Divine sovereignty attests to the reality that as a whole, ministerial success is a sure thing. That doesn't mean that every individual minister may be successful, but that the outlook of success should be God's will in your mind as a minister, and God's will is going to be advanced in the world if the minister is following God's prescription for the office. It's the way that you're supposed to think about it. You're not supposed to be theoretical about it and say, well, you know, there were seven churches in Asia Minor, and some of there's only one two candlesticks left, and that's it, and all the other churches closed, so success isn't always a sure thing. No, no. Success may not always be visible, and the minister, even if it's not visible, must keep his course, knowing that God's divine sovereignty is that which makes ministerial success successful. Symptoms of success are often mistakenly seen, and that's what you're thinking now. But their best doubtful signs, large crowds of people, big sanctuaries, lots of people coming to hear the word. Oh, if they love who we are, if they love our ministry, if they admire the way that we preach, what if they only have a temporary interest in the message? How do you know if they do or don't? If they have a general confession of their sinfulness, how do you know it's long lasting? Ministers tend to desire to see success and so have a difficult time when they don't see what they hope to see. Oh, well, there's just not a lot of people here today. You know, I'm, I'm going to be preaching to 10 people today. I was hoping I was going to be preaching to 50 and nobody came. Or in the opposite manner, the sanctuary is filled. We have 5,000 people in the seat. They must love my sermons. They must, probably because you're not preaching the word. They say, ministers, they say, is the Lord among us or not? I think, that way. is God with me or not? But the Bible presses ministers to have high expectations from their labors in the Christian ministry. Here's what Charles Bridges says. Though Christ's doctrine was divine, Though his character was perfect, and though daily miracles attested to his mission, yet little appears to have been done visibly. Think that through. Think about what Jesus did in his earthly ministry and the success that he had. While, Bridges says, while Peter, a poor fisherman, endued with this almighty power, becomes the instrument of converting more under a single sermon, than probably his master had done throughout his whole ministry. He gets up on the day of Pentecost, thousand people are saved. The success of ministry is at the will of the Spirit of God. It's God's sovereignty. The minister is simply to remain faithful in his duties, and in doing so, the Spirit will work. John Howe says, alas. What would preaching do if we could suppose it never so general while the Spirit of the living God restrains and withholds his influences. That would be terrible. We may as well attempt to batter strong walls with the breath of our mouths. <sighs> Try to blow the wall down. <sighs> it's not going to work. As to do good upon men's souls without the Spirit of God.